What's happening my fellow geeks and geek heads? Welcome to a special little episode of Cosplay Chris and today I want to show you guys something that I have been working on and off for the past couple of weeks now. Now about a month ago I saw some photos done by different artists, all illustrations, sketches, graphic design of what Batman would look like in different timelines. Had he existed when the space age, pirates, the apocalypse, even a steampunk look, just different incarnations of the suit. And I mentioned pirates. I I saw the pirate Batman. What if Batman had existed when pirates were around? And it got me thinking, I want to do a pirate Batman cosplay. Not a cheesy, you know, bird on the shoulder, knife in the mouth. I'm talking like hardcore pirate Batman. So I got my brain ticking with the design element and the first thing that I wanted to nail was the cow. Now, as some of you know, a couple of years ago, I had a buddy named Stevie D design a hybrid cow for me in 3D. It was then 3D printed by Shapeways. I took a mold of it. When I made a urethane casting, the cow didn't sit quite right because it was very small and tight on my head. Like my head would bulge out and the horns would kind of go inward a bit and it just didn't look right. It didn't sit right. So the mold has been shelved. It's a perfectly fine mold. It's actually one of my best molds. It's a silicon mold with a plaster bandage mother mold. So I cracked that mold back out and I made a resin casting. It wasn't too thick, wasn't too thin. It was just right. Perfect casting actually. One of my best castings as well as one of my best molds. Now I had this concept that the cow was sort of crudely put together with bits of leather and armor plating and it ties at the back like a bandana, like a pirate's bandana. Now, obviously being a piece of resin, the cowl in its hole will not fit over my head. So I had to cut out the back section and remove the base of the chin. So essentially it's like a Captain America helmet, which is great because that gives me the freedom to turn my head, tilt my neck and do everything. So to just slide on top and then you tie it at the back like a bandana. In theory, I was hoping this would work. So I got to work stenciling out where I want all the stitching to be. I drilled all the holes and then I got to work. And then I managed to find some amazing looking weathered pleather from Lincraft. So we've got a brown one there. And we've got a black one there. Now this took me a couple of days to figure out where I wanted to place the brown pleather and the black pleather. And I finally settled on, I want the sides and the horns to be the brown pleather and right up the middle, the black pleather. Now that was a pain in the ass because you've got to very carefully glue around the edge and the seam where you want the pleather to stick. Once that's stuck, you remove the excess, you got to do vice versa. And then I got to work doing the leather stitching. And after three days of leather stitching, I couldn't feel my fingers. Now let me just backtrack a bit. I did prime the resin casting and sprayed it with a matte black spray paint. Once the pleather work and the leather stitching was done, I then went in and dry brushed some Model Masters silver and copper all over the matte black plating that's been exposed to make it look like it's almost made of copper, steel, you don't really know what type of metal it is, but it's got age to it. It's starting to oxidize from the seawater. And I did add little scratches, and I will show you in a minute, there is a massive scratch that does go through the pleather and exposing some of the faceplate armor. And then I add some more pleather at the back for the actual bandana tying itself. And so finally, here it is in all its glory. Now I'll just give you a close up and you see what's going on there with all the detail. Now the hardest part was attaching the pleather, especially when the black pleather had to meet the brown pleather. It just got really tricky. Fingers covered in glue, but you know what? It's damn good fun. And I'm very happy with how the leather stitching has turned out. You see the back here, I still do have to run some leather stitching across the back here. I love the whole time I've been talking and I haven't even noted the panda eyes yet. So I will be trying it on and I will be doing some outdoor shots to show you guys the close up detail because my autofocus is really playing up at the moment, but there you go. There's a nice close up look there. I've got the scratches. As you can see right there, I've got a scratch going straight through the eye and exposing the metal plate. Now, of course, cause I've got the panda eyes, let's try this on. And this is the inside there. It's a complete mess of just different parts of leather stitching. I do have to clean up that excess overspray of the primer and the um, matte black because if you do sweat, it does rub off on your nose. You get a black nose and it looks ridiculous. So make sure all three tabs are hanging loose and you pop it on like so. There we go. So these are the bandana parts and the black part just runs right down the back. It's sort of like decorative. I didn't want my hair being exposed. So grab it tight and just one knot, two knots. If I'm feeling lucky up like a bandana, bring them around, get the black one, bring it around. And there we go. That that's it. That's head movement, everything. It's just not a nice change. Now I am fully aware that, you know, part of my nose is exposed, but I don't like, this is 
something different. This is my own concept. And that's the great thing about doing your own concept. You can do whatever you want. You don't have to follow a set template. Obviously, now that the cow is what I want it to be and it's working, that was the priority before I moved on to the rest of the costume. If the cow didn't work, I'd scrap the idea altogether because the cow is the selling point. It's very comfy too. Even though it is hard resin, I will be lining the inside with some black felt just to make, you know, removal a bit more easier, especially on the ears because the resin does make your ears a bit uh, raw after a while. And obviously the black eye makeup just makes it a lot more pow. Arr, I'm Batman. And of course to take it off, just undo the bandana like so. There we go. Ah, pop it right off. It's not as bad as pulling a urethane color for it like rips all your hair. Oh, by the way, this is my just got out of bed hair. How good does it look? <laughs> I look like a chicken. So there you have it, guys. This is the start of my pirate Batman cosplay. Like I mentioned before, I wanted to get the cowl down pat first. I wanted to make sure it worked. It looked proper. It didn't look cheesy. didn't look goofy. And in my eyes, I think I've done a good job. I think it's what I envisioned it to be originally. So with that being said, I will now be moving on to the rest of the costume. So I'm gonna leave you now with some nice outdoor shots of the cow so you can get some nice up close looks of the actual thing and the detail that I put into the face plating. So that's pretty much it. wearing this thing it's just easy it's just a nice relaxing change there you go it's better so thanks very much for watching guys if you had any questions or queries anything you're unsure about me explaining how i made this please drop a comment below and i'll try and get back to you as soon as possible hope you guys are having an awesome week hope you're well be happy be silly and until next time geeks please always remember cosplayers do it best